hello. Uh, if you saw episode one, uh, you might recognize where we're sitting. Uh, that's right, the same spot. Welcome to episode two of my first round of Jokes on Me, the TBR game created by Bailey from Is Bailey Reading. I'm Ruby, this is Ruby Red, and we're playing a different game today <laughs> than the one we normally play. It's the same game as we were playing um, in the last episode. Thanks so much for joining me outside yet again. Despite the wind, I really am putting my faith in this microphone's ability to not pick up the wind. I just really wanted to film this today, and outside is pretty much my only shot. So let's talk about episode two. Just a refresher for anybody who is here and does not know in depth all of the rules of Bailey's TBR game. The way that each round works is that I'm going to pull three cards from a deck and those cards are going to tell me how to move around the game board and I'm going to read books for all the prompts that I receive within those three cards um, plus a my choice and that's going to be the contents of this episode. So let's see what we get. Okay we're back to do my next card flip so this is where we left off. Those are my discarded cards. I didn't reshuffle. I don't really feel like I have to. Okay, our next pick. <gasps> Wait. Oh, unhaul. Huh. Unhaul. Yeah. I really struggled with this because I feel like I did do a great job of like purging my shelves before we moved. Um, and there's definitely maybe some books on my red shelf that I could get rid of, but I just like I really wasn't sure. And I thought about just DNFing some um arcs that I might have but I don't feel good about that either because it does nothing but hurt my overall net galley score in the long run so I've decided to unhaul library on unquiet history by Matthew Battles um I got this for one dollar <laughs> at a used bookstore um because I was just reading a bunch of books about libraries and the history of libraries and I saw this and I was like oh that's fun um but I haven't had a great time reading those books. Um, so I feel like this actually might be interesting, but it's just something I'd rather listen to the audiobook and not something I feel like I need to have on my shelf. So I'm gonna donate it. Okay, <laughs> let's see the next draw, please. Our next card is a 10 and that's not special. We just moved 10 spaces, great. <laughs> oldest published oh no <laughs> oh god i'm scared of that one okay to find out what book i have on my tbr that's the oldest published i'm gonna head to my goodreads shelf that is my own tbr shelf uh, and just sort by date published this is good um it's giovanni through Okay, I don't want to get up, but Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin was published in 1956. So that's the book I'm going to read for that prompt. All right, our final card for this episode. It's a seven again. So we move across the board again and then I, I completed it. That's the end of round one. So I'm gonna move to here, which is lowest rated. Oh geez. Another prompt where I don't get to pick the book. So we're back on Goodreads. We're gonna sort my own TBR shelf, which has my arcs and my physical shelf by average rating. And the lowest one is The Marigold by Andrew F. Sullivan. That is an arc I have that was published this past April, so oops. Um, and I don't remember a thing about it, but I'm gonna read it. <laughs> Those are the flips. <laughs> and I have finished, well, once I read these books, I will have finished this round. So round complete. What do you think I should get? Okay, yeah, I filmed those other two book picks um, a few nights ago, but now it's time to talk about my choice because I've actually already made it almost halfway through the my choice book for this episode, which is Zero Days by Ruth Ware. Now listen, I have read almost every other Ruth Ware book, maybe every other Ruth Ware book, actually, now that you mention it, um, and I've had mixed feelings about a lot of them, um, and I have very strong feelings, negative feelings about the audiobook narrator. 
And also I have listened to pretty much all of her books. Like I have not eyeball read, I think, any of them. So if you're wondering why would you only listen to her books as audiobooks when you hate the narrator, um, it's a great question, but I'm not going to answer it. And I've been seeing a lot of really bad reviews for Zero Days, uh, which naturally piqued my interest because the only other Ruth Ware I feel like I saw really bad reviews for was One by One, which I actually liked. And I hated the It Girl. I don't feel like the reviews were as bad for the It Girl. So now I'm <laughs> reading Zero Days. Um, I'm about halfway through. The plot is our main character, Jack. One thing about Ruth Ware, her characters are always going to have annoying nicknames, in my opinion. So I forget her actual name. It's not Jacqueline. Um, and then her sister Helen goes by Hell. She's like, oh, got to call Hell. Come on. Is that real? Anyway, Jack and her husband Gabe are security consultants. Basically, they hack or they break into companies. Um, they're hired by those companies to try to break in and to see like where their security weaknesses are. And at the beginning, we are, we're, they're doing a job. And Jack is the one who does, <laughs> so Jack is the one who does the breaking and entering and Gabe does like the techie stuff. So he like hacks into the camera systems and all that uh, from the comfort of their home. And at the end of this job, she gets home and he's been brutally murdered. <laughs> and basically like she because of a series of other events that slowly unfold from her past and whatever like she's the main suspect and she is doing all this like tech stuff like there's all these like vpns and like secure texting platforms and like all that stuff so that's like kind of fun <laughs> and i love the breaking and entering scenes and the like her her kind of thing is that she's just like is she just walks into places like she's like charming and imp 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 good at improv um so that aspect has been like really fun but um I do feel like I know exactly what's happening <laughs> and uh it, it's very Ruth Ware I don't know what to say I think like again like the character her characters are always recognizable to me because they're kind of the same um and her writing style is the same so yeah anyway it all feels very familiar but I'm actually enjoying it so I'm really curious to see what could possibly go wrong that it's getting so many like one star reviews uh it's and it's counting down like it starts with like seven days until and now it's where i'm down to like five days so that's what's up um and i'm gonna be starting my other books soon okay i hope that the wind out here has not been too disturbing or whatever my hair has been doing has not been too distracting <laughs> Hi, I have a lot to say. <laughs> I have a lot of updates to provide because I have been busy reading while I've also been busy being busy. And so I haven't been updating as things happen. So we're just gonna like quickly try to get back up to speed. First update is that I finished zero days and I gave it three stars. And I can see kind of why uh, it hasn't been super well received. There was one thing going on throughout the entire book that is just something that I can't remember if Ruth has done this before but I've definitely read it in thrillers before and it just like annoys me it's just a way to add tension to the story to add stakes or to like raise stakes that I just find to be like not it <laughs> like not not enjoyable to read. So throughout pretty much the whole book, I was struggling with that single element of the plot. I was just like, I wish we just weren't doing that. But the, you know, the ups and downs, the, the thrills, the mystery did all come together fine. So while I didn't love the book, I did like it fine. I gave it three stars. I was engaged the whole time. It kept me on the edge of my seat, um, despite some plot elements that I don't care for. And a shall we say twist at the end that really like I threw up my hands and I was like you gotta be kidding me Ruth don't do this to me but she did it to me so yeah ending absolutely unacceptable but <laughs> the rest of it yeah it was a fun time so that's zero days um and that was my my choice for this episode <laughs> the first thing I read um but then I 
have to tell you something about the lowest rated book on my TBR, The Marigold by Andrew F. Sullivan. It's rated the lowest for a reason. I DNF'd that book at 50%. It was kind of gross. That's the main reason. It's a sci-fi dystopian future sort of thing. Um, like fungi apocalypse, <laughs> sort of. There's this thing, The Rot, that is taking over a future Toronto. Uh, and I, I liked that the author was giving us perspectives from so many different kinds of people in this future world with different perspectives on the way that the climate and the economy and like civilization, the structure of the world, etc. all of that was going. Uh, there was definitely going to be lots of commentary about capitalism and climate change, I think, and uh, that kind of stuff. But it was just every character was either like doing something or talking about doing something or just talking about things in a gross way or about things that I consider to be kind of gross in a very casual flippant way like yes like humanity has like dark aspects like there are nasty bits of of the human condition and human behavior and having characters that are flawed and such is generally believed by me to be good and interesting but I didn't find any of it interesting in this instance I just like one character after the other I was like ugh 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 until I gave up. I wish that I could have finished it because like I said, like mushroom horror, it's not really horror, but kind of that sort of fungus like thing. I really like, I'm really interested in that because it's just like, there's a lot you can do with it. It could be fun and cool and whatever, but yeah, I wasn't getting that from this at all. And I just, I read half of it and I didn't care about a single character. I didn't want to know what was going to happen to any of them. So, I, I had to stop and I do feel bad about DNFing arcs because like I was given this book for free in exchange for feedback, honest feedback, and I hate to have to give the feedback that's like this book was so bad I couldn't finish it. Uh, but yeah, I think it also maybe is like being marketed a little bit incorrectly or something because like the cover and the synopsis like sound like I would love it, but so that's lowest average rating on my shelf. And now we can talk finally about the oldest published book on my TBR, which is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I am loving this book. This book. I have about 40 pages left, so uh, hoping to finish it ASAP. And then I'm hoping to read every other thing that James Baldwin has written because it's it's written it's written so well especially after the nightmare that was the marigold and getting through a Ruth Ware <laughs> that I only kind of liked like it's such a treat to read something that is well written the story is about this guy David he's an American in the 50s living in Paris kind of like escaping his life uh, and he is gay bisexual I think he's gay at a time when that requires uh secrecy and he's in Paris and he meets this guy Giovanni and they enter into a relationship and this is sort of the story of like how they came together and also like how they fell apart um it ends in tragedy there have been hints since the beginning that Giovanni is executed and it's told with flashbacks and a sort of interesting take on time and it just has a lot a lot to say about love and passion lust but also like love of self love of life um and oh god it's just like the writing is really good and just the dealing with david is dealing with his identity with you know wanting the American dream like wife and kids to be able to like go home make his father proud and such um but also wanting to like 
soothe this deep existential like dread and like fear that Giovanni has and he sort of gets like swept up in it it's just like it's really good okay <laughs> I'm really loving it it is really sad but the prose is hitting so hard so yeah I'm really enjoying this and I'm hoping to finish it soon and then when I do I'll give you my final thoughts and then that'll be the end of this and I think I'm going to pick my reward for Tic Tac TBR at the end of this once I finish my final book for this episode this round wow it's so exciting okay so BRB okay I finished it I finished Giovanni's room and I loved it I I loved it I want to read everything else that James Baldwin has written it was so it was so nice to read a book that was concerned not just with like the human condition etc like all of those like big themes but also like excellent deployment of every single word i just really appreciated it and i was moved by the story oh my god it was awful <laughs> but it was so good so that's the final book so now i have completed episode two and round one of jokes on me and i am gonna choose a reward i already did sorry i didn't bring my laptop out here um i want to play again i want to play another round for sure um but i'm gonna take a break for well, i'm gonna take a break for uh december <laughs> and you'll see what I'm up to in December when I post my TBR and I'm also probably going to take a break for all of January and half of February because that is the mega squash that series round which I'm going to try to participate in as much as I can but I'm not going to read anything I don't want to read so I don't know how well I'll be able to do but that's okay okay and the reward that I picked I just generated one from my TBR game like I normally do when I do well at that is double up so I'll be able to use that in my um, November game um, and yeah that should be posted soon but I want to say thank you to Bailey for this game <laughs> because it was really fun I'm so glad I finally played it I've been wanting to for ages and I had so much fun and I read so many books, good books, and books that I had on my bookshelf that I had been avoiding because I got caught up in the, like, the library thing, you know, when Libby just keeps giving you books and you're like, oh my god, I better read these, I better read these, I better read these, neglecting the books that you actually paid for. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here. I hope that you'll check out Bailey's Bailey's playlist of her game and also her channel in general because she's amazing and uh I hope that I'll see you back here soon for my TBR video okay thank you goodbye